we follow some guiding principles that we've thought through very carefully that make sense for us in our environment that help us not only think about but actually take action. We have James Dale joining us from, we weren't sure where he was until about half an hour ago, but we now know that he's in Canada right now. And he's on his way uh, to his new role as the head of school at NIST International School in Thailand. Uh, and just like many of you who are transitioning, trying to hope that he gets there, he's worked at the Canadian International School and United World College in Singapore and was most recently um, the Director of Operations in Europe for the GEMS Educational Organization. It's interesting that James has taught and been associated in both traditional and non-traditional educational settings um, from, I believe, like outdoor ed mm. centers and even correctional programs. Uh, so he comes to us with this just really, really interesting set ar array of experiences and, and been many years now applying all that he's learned in international schools. And when, when, when we are lucky enough to have him with us for the PTC, which we have for the last number of years, he co-teaches our course called Creating an Effective School. James, we are ready for your wisdom. Right. Thanks, Bambi. And good morning, everyone. And thanks for that introduction. Um, as Kristen said, uh, I've been living the uh, unstable connection as part of my <laughs> Zoom reality. And I think actually not just Zoom reality, but internet reality, and actually just all, pretty much all reality at the moment is unstable connection uh, as we're all kind of transitioning or many of us are transitioning between one place and another. And I guess learning to live with that, which, which kind of leads toward the topic today for today's Pearl as well. Um, the, in thinking about the Pearl and what leadership advice might we share within our group of colleagues, um, thinking about what's timely as well. And so really coming up and thinking about the future in the next couple of weeks or months for many people who are going to be starting their school year as principals and really asking the question, what do I do when I don't know what to do? And so we'll look at that today and I'll, I'll provide you with some advice and certainly share some experience that I've had. And I know I'm speaking to a very experienced audience and you'll have your experiences too. So I hope we get a chance to share some of those ideas as well. We can move to the, um, just to some slides that I put together just to have a visual. Uh, I know I have a great face for radio, so we'll just move to the slides so that uh, you don't have to look at me. The, um, the idea too, and, and thanks Guy for, uh, for driving the, the uh, like the slideshow bus today for us. The, the whole idea of what do we do when we don't know what to do is kind of become, especially in the last few months for many of us, the reality of the decision-making that we've had to be part of. So the idea that just as we move forward up to the next slide, um, thinking about this, this hard question because we've had to make lots of decisions in our leadership roles without knowing. And so, just as we go forward to the idea that what do we do when we don't know what to do, if we just go to the next one, um, is we rely on a few very simple principles to guide our thinking and actions. Now you're probably reading that and thinking to yourself, that's probably the least profound pearl I've ever heard and something that I could have come up with and regularly do. And I agree, we often, I mean, you know, many of us are mission driven, or we say that we have a few guiding principles, or as Covey would say, we have our compass points that we always rely on. And I think that's important that we, we recognize that we do that, but to really explore a little bit more deeply why that's so important. And then really to say, um, what are those and why do you hold those principles and not some of the other ones? And I really wanna be practical with this as like as well, certainly as a principal of a school, and talk about how I think about some of those things, how other industries might think about those things, and then how you might reflect on and maybe refine some of those principles that you use to guide your thinking and actions as well. And I wanna start off with a bit of a story outside of education. And if you go to the next slide, uh, we have a very a loosely uh, related educational image. And I, what, it, what this is, is this is uh, a picture of an officer. You can see her standing at the front and she's giving instructions to her colleagues. Now, 
officers in the military for centuries went to officer training camp. And the reason they went to officer training camp was to learn the rules of engagement, to understand the history and what's happened before, understand what variables they were dealing with, know how those variables were combining together into an equation, and then coming out with, well, if these things are happening, then this needs to be the next action. And literally for centuries, things were complicated, but the variables pretty much stayed the same. So it was quite predictable. And interestingly in the military, which is where I do some of my work in education too, in terms of advising for leadership, that's really changed in the last 30 years where those variables aren't the same. And it's not just a complicated environment that we're working in, it's incredibly complex. And what we mean by complex is the environment that we stepped in today might not be the environment that's gonna be there tomorrow. As a matter of fact, it's probably not. So as a result, what worked today might not work tomorrow. So as a result, the officer's training has changed from memorizing this huge manual of if this, then that, to the manual's too big to memorize. We need to shift towards a few simple concepts, especially in the fog of battle. And I think I see a lot of parallels with this as we're in the fog of school, as, as principals not quite knowing what to do. The manual's not working anymore. And I don't know about you, but when I flip to my principal's manual and turn to the chapter on crisis and look for the page on COVID-19 and how to socially distance six-year-olds, there wasn't anything there. And the reason there wasn't anything there is because these are unprecedented times. There's been a few examples, but we really don't know. We're not drawing on decades of research. We're having to deal with something in the immediacy of the minute. So the shift in the military from this big kind of instruction, right, of kind of, you know, what to do when all these variables are happening to here's a few simple principles that we can rely on no matter what. And if we go to the next uh, slide, what we'll see is that here are from a military example, but I think with like also some parallels for education, what they've taught their officers to do is move forward, take the high ground and communicate. And as I was working with some of these groups, it became apparent to me that we kind of do the same thing in education. We move forward, we make decisions, we take the high ground, we use our guiding statements to you know, guide our decisions and we communicate. We ask questions to understand, and then we share our thinking and direction of purpose. And that's one of our key roles as principal is, is to communicate that. So again, just having those guiding principles to say, okay, no matter what's happening, I know we need to move forward and make decisions. I know those decisions are gonna be on the high ground and we've heard from other pearls as well already to be mission aligned or guiding statement or foundational statement aligned. And I know I need to communicate. So just acknowledging that's important and I'll just take just a second to kind of work through some of those to give you some practical examples of things certainly that I've done and learned from other people as well. So if we just go to the next slide. The, there's a notion that when we make decisions, this is the move forward, we know we have to make decisions. One of the great things about having uh, a book that would be a manual of if this happens, then that happens, is it gives you an incredible amount of confidence. When we don't have that, we can feel very unstable making decisions. And I think this is something that we just need to acknowledge and something certainly that I've been working with different schools and saying with different leadership teams, know that the decisions you're gonna make are with imperfect data and therefore they're not gonna be perfect decisions. And you know what? That's okay. Give yourself permission that we're gonna, we're gonna make sloppy decisions and we might learn something the next day that we could have made a better decision. But we're gonna make this, well, we have to make decisions. It's one of our jobs as principals. So know that that's, that's a requirement. And give yourself permission to do the best you can. We're not gonna be complacent about it. We're gonna gather as much data as we can. We're gonna make the best decision that we can possibly make given the information that we have. But know that we have to make it and that's okay. If you're someone who absolutely needs certainty, this is not a good, like area to be working in, right? And so but the reality is in the next couple of weeks and months, as in the past couple of months, this is our reality as principals. We're gonna have to make decisions about what does the classroom look like for seven-year-olds in art? 
And we just, that we're just going to have to figure that out. What does the busing look like in terms of transportation? How do we fulfill our obligations to make these decisions? And it's going to be imperfect and that's okay. So there are examples that we can draw from and we'll certainly draw on those examples, but this isn't like we've had, again, decades of research to be able to say this is absolute best practice. So this idea of complicated decision-making has to get replaced by what's on the next slide, which is complex decision-making. And we can move forward with that too. Now, just There's many examples of complexity. So I'll just very quickly go through. This is one called the Kinevin framework. And up in the top right-hand side, you'll see the complicated part, very precise. We're gonna shift into the complex because really that's where we're working with. And if we go to the next slide, this, is, this will be available for you afterwards so you can have a look at it. The whole idea of making decisions in the complex environment is that we don't know what the relationship is between cause and effect. And we can only know what that is after it's happened. So people right now are saying, oh, uh, now I can make sense of what happened in May when we were trying to go online and this is what was happening and, and we can realize what that practice should have been at the time. But again, because it's complex too, we really don't know. We can take some of those lessons forward but we really don't know what's coming up next. And we should be more comfortable working in this environment as, as teachers, because if we're doing our job and we're changing kids and kids are learning, they shouldn't be the same kids tomorrow that we had today. So we should constantly be adapting. The key takeaway with this is in terms of we need to make decisions, the way you make decisions in this environment that we're gonna have to is to probe, do something, measure, you know, sense it, and then change quickly. Again, working with schools over the past few months, one of the things that I was really interested in is how quickly leaders adapted to what they were learning on a daily basis. Some schools went online in March and didn't ask for teacher feedback until June. The question becomes, how might we do that much more quickly on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, or even lesson by lesson? One of the most a successful adaptive schools that I was working with had set up, for example, a survey at the end of every lesson that teacher just went into and said, here's the two things that worked, here's two things that didn't work so well, and here's what we might want to change for the future. That was collated every day and shared out to teachers with the understanding that what works in one area might not work in the other. But at least they started to gain some understanding of what was working and how they might respond to that very quickly. And if you're familiar with an agile framework, that might be a structure that would work in your school in terms of how do we pivot into different really productive areas really quickly. So just an example. We can move to the next slide as well as we start to think about, and this is one of my favorite slides, to talk about the answers that are simple but wrong that we all seem to want to take because it's easier as opposed to the complex but right. And we need to be understanding that we need to, we, we work in complex environments and we need to make those decisions. The missing piece in this image that many people don't pick up is the fact that there's a bookshelf on the complex but right. And you'll notice that everybody that's on the complex but right path is reading something. And what there, there's many interpretations of this if you look at different, like different elements of it in terms of the research, but really looking at what data do we have to support our decisions and to support our pathway forward. So looking at that data. So again, just as we're thinking about organizing our schools, organizing the structures within our schools going forward, how are we organizing students? How are we organizing our teachers? We wanna be a very adaptive with that so that we're not just sticking with the simple but wrong, which may be just the traditional model, but actually capturing data about like what's working, probe, so try something, see what works, amplify what's working and dampen what's not. So just as a way forward there, like, like with some practical suggestions. We go to the next slide. We get back to, so that's the move forward and know that we need to make decisions. The other one around making decisions is know, what the, know who's making the decision, what's the, like what's the framework, but also what's the timeline. I see people panicking right now about decisions that don't need to be made for weeks, right? So know what the timeline is and give yourself that space. The next one is take the high ground. So just the idea that they, they're called guiding statements because they guide us in our decision, right? They give us our direction. Guiding statements don't necessarily tell us exactly what steps to take, but they do point us in a, 
like they all point us and align us within a general direction. And we've had some, we've had many of the, like of the people providing pearls over the last few weeks talk about that in terms of being mission aligned, uh, in terms of not wavering from our dispositional, you know, commitments that we've made as an organization. And they're certainly helpful that we want to be, be very mission aligned and be consistent and aligned in terms of what we're doing. And if we go to the next slide too, just as a practical suggestion in terms of those compass points, I think we talk a lot about, we can talk a lot about being mission aligned without really getting into what, does, what exactly does that mean? So taking the time to say, for example, um, when you're in your, in your meeting with your leadership team, um, if integrity is part of our mission, turn to, or you know, think about it and then turn to a partner around the table and talk about what does integrity look like when we're considering social distancing or when we're considering communication to parents or when we're considering board decisions so that we're really making it practical and strong concrete connections between the dispositions that we want to aspire to and that we've committed to and the actions that we're taking so that there's a direct you know like cause with that and we're having that discussion as a big leadership group as well as principals it's our job to facilitate those conversations Right. That's our role is to help people align. I can be focused around that. So take the high ground and be mission aligned. We'll move to the next slide. And the last part is the communication. And I know for me, this is one area that I'm working on um, where when we get busy, we forget to communicate. And so the idea that, you know, um, I have all these ideas, I have a strategy, and I expect everyone to somehow magically read my mind and know exactly what I'm thinking and what I'm expecting without me actually saying anything. So the importance of staying in constant contact, reminding people either about the direction that we're going to go and, and why, but even before that is the ask questions to understand. And if we just move to the next slide as well, the whole ask questions to understand first as a genuine strategy if we really don't know what to do, one of the things that we should be thinking of is understanding the priorities of our stakeholders. So this is the stakeholder model that we talk about within so many courses too. What's the board's feeling around um, you know, the current situation and what are their priorities? What are your parents' priorities? What are your kids in grade six priority? Um, what are your teachers' priorities in science? And just having those conversations, not to tell what to do, but first to understand what are your priorities and what do you value most and where might you be able to, or be willing to compromise and where wouldn't you? Because that's just gonna help us make better decisions. So that idea that we're gonna first communicate to understand in terms of asking questions to gain that understanding, make a decision that's mission aligned and then shift into the space of now, as, the, as it says on the next slide, I'm gonna communicate why we made the decision we did, like what's the purpose, what's the alignment, and you know, like how are we making this all work together? So we can just move to the last slide as well, in terms of just that, you know, here's our thinking and what we considered, here's the direction and purpose, and this is why we're all moving in this way together. And again, the magic words in a, in a complex environment are always, this is the data that we had, this is the decision that we made at the time. It was the best decision we could make. And we're going we're gonna to put in these structures and strategies in order to make sure that we can be agile and move forward and continue to change as quickly as possible in terms of what's working and, like, and what's not working. So if we just move to the last slide, my pearl around what do you do when you don't know what to do? We follow some guiding principles that we've thought through very carefully that make sense for us in our environment that help us not only think about, but actually take action. That's my pearl. So any questions, welcome. Thank you so much, James. So, so much richness there. I feel like we could take each one of your three bullet points and turn it into a week long, you know, intensive course together and maybe, you know, write that down, Kristen, we might just do that, you know. And in fact, uh, really many of the things that we are now that we're looking back over the, the three weeks and forward to the next four days, you know, we really are looking for 
And what are the key areas that you as principals and assistant principals and other leaders in the school really, really need help with that we can come together as a community? We do have a couple of questions. Um, if you have a moment. Absolutely. Um, do you have a specific way that you decide what to communicate and what to hold back during these complex and uncertain times? Sure. So I always believe in communication uh, having structure. So talking about the why first, so saying, because we're a school that values inclusion, for example, we are going to, uh, we've, we've gathered data and examples around this particular decision. We've prioritized these you know, pieces around keeping all kids together because we're an inclusive model and we want to keep all kids together and having that experience. And therefore we've made this decision going forward. I would also say, and I've had, uh, like I would suggest too, saying, even giving a sample of the menu, here are some of the other decisions that we could have made. And here are some reasons why we decided not to choose those and to prioritize this one. Speaks, it, like it, it, it serves two purposes. If you're speaking with parents or staff or students or the board or the leadership team, it shows that you did have a breadth of option and you actually thought about it and there was some thoughtful rationale that went into it and lets people know that you did consider other options and this was the best one at the time. So I guess that type of, of shaping of communication around, this is our bigger purpose of why, here are the values that we, like, that we held. I often talk about our identity as teachers and educators and therefore then down to the concrete, here's the decisions that we could have chosen from, this is the one that we made and why. That's such great, uh, you know, really helpful practical advice and anticipating what each stakeholder group is yeah. likely to object to is if I think you could put that into your set of strategies as well. I see Michelle shaking her head. Yes. Um, that we, um, you know, that if we can just take five minutes as a, as a leader and say, if I were sitting in the teacher's sit chair, mm -hmm and I'm hearing this, what are, what are the top three objections I'm gonna have? And then build those into your communication. I know myself as a principal in a school head, I used that strategy many times. Yeah. The template was, this is what we're doing. Um, I'll bet you're thinking this as a teacher and you know, um, here's, here's, the re here's the rationale behind it. You still, you still don't win with everybody, but you have done what leading looks like, you know, in terms of anticipating uh, that we have, if you guys are okay, we are at 10.30, but can we just do one more question? Everybody okay? Yeah, you, yep. can, you can go off the call if you want to, anybody but James, but you know, I'm gonna just stick with this for just a moment. Um, uh, how do you seek first to understand when you have such diverse views in the community? There's a week, right. but, you know, give us 30 <laughs> seconds. Right. Yeah, so I would say, um, first of all, the fact that you've acknowledged that there's different views already leaps you forward to be able to make a more rational decision. And as you just said, Bambi too, the power of being able to stand up in front of an audience, whoever that audience might be, and say, having had conversations with many of you, I understand that there's a wide you know, diversity of views here and like in values. So, I mean, I, I, I'll give an example. I stood up virtually in front of parents. I sat down virtually in front of parents and said, I know we have one camp that is saying, you are absolutely taking my kids because they're driving me crazy and they have to go back to school. And I have another camp that says, there's no possible way I'm sending my kids out of my house. So, and everybody laughed. So it was just acknowledging, here's two extreme dichotomous positions. And my job is to do something that's gonna make sense for both of you and I, and I can't. So here's what we're gonna do. This is the position that we, as you can see how that just transpires. So acknowledging that there's difference as, like as Erin mentioned in her pearl, acknowledging that there's difference is a huge step forward. And then just providing a rationale for what makes sense and why. And then stepping back to what many have iterated over the last three weeks, including today, that the why comes from, this is the design principle or the principle mm -hmm. that we are driving this decision from. We've listened to the points of view the centerpiece is, you know, we, we need to pay attention to how will kids best learn. That's always right. the starting point. And then saying, you know, in this circumstance, we've made those choices. Okay, we do have to uh, wrap up. We have a couple other questions. We will put those into our resource document and hope that 
one of us one day goes in and actually put some answers in there. It's coming. It's coming. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, James. Really, really, really helpful. And I'm, I can see with all of the nodding going on around on the screen that um, you have a lot of people's minds going and we appreciate all the practical examples that you've given.